beautiful but slightly overcast day here at Pescadero. I'm going to be working on a 24 by 30 inch stretch canvas. Uh, this is sort of a large size for me as far as plein air goes, but it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I just feel like a larger canvas better communicates the grandeur of the scene. Um, but today's goals are simply to put paint on canvas, no expectations. All right, so here's the scene I'm working with. I'm thinking of having uh, the horizon on the lower third uh, so I can feature the clouds. And then also I'll be looking for bits of light on the land or the rocks in the distance uh, to try to give some sense of light or illumination to the painting. Because this canvas is fairly large, it's going to be a little more difficult for me to film the process, but I'll try to get back as often as possible. Uh, I am using my usual approach here, which is sketching in burnt sienna. And then I'm going to try to work quickly as well. All right, there's some distant hills out here. Actually, right now there's some interesting cloud shapes. And there's bits of cerulean uh, sky showing through. I'm going to try to get this blocked in quickly and then just look for uh, different things that are happening that look interesting, like cloud patterns or patterns in the water. Uh, thinking of having some breaking waves in the foreground and then maybe some breaking waves also in the distance. And a bit of sand down here. And I just want a few basic lines to get started and then I'm going to start blocking it in. All right, so at first I just put some large shapes in and now I'm becoming a bit more specific with the shapes. You know, once I like their positioning, there's a rock here, rock here, and then this portion here is land and the land will be the darkest uh, portion in the painting so I want to make sure that these shapes are appealing I also want to make sure that I don't paint the land too big because I do want to capture a sort of a grand view here all right I'm using a worn out number eight uh, to scrub in the darks here and I'm just using a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and just like when I'm painting on a panel, I'm keeping the mix thin so that I get some transparency. And I will reinforce these uh, colors and values as the painting progresses. But first I just want to get, uh, I want to get the, the canvas covered as quickly as possible. I can't really judge specific colors until uh, the whole canvas is covered. We've got a mid-tone gray-green here. All right, I've thinned this mix with odorless mineral spirits and a bit of liquid. So it is pretty thin. Trying to mop it on quickly. And I could use a larger brush, but I actually like, I like the texture I get or the effects I get with a number eight, even on a larger canvas like this. I am holding the brush at the end and kind of swinging my whole arm here. As I've mentioned before, I like to get energy and spontaneity into the, into the scrubbing and then stand back and look and see what sort of patterns emerge. putting in the dry sand, paying attention to values, making sure the sand is dark enough uh, that it allows the white water to be the lightest light in the painting. Mostly going for values and shapes at this point. I will be adjusting the colors and values and having that variety uh, in the painting actually gives it energy, vitality, makes it interesting. For the white water, I'm starting with uh, titanium white with ultramarine blue. And then I'll be adding variations on top of this. Some warmer notes. I'm 
I'm trying to approach this large painting with the exact approach that I take for smaller paintings, uh, but just maybe working a little bit faster to cover the canvas. But I'm still focusing on shapes and composition, so I am walking back about 10 feet to try to just take in the whole picture and make sure that I'm liking the shapes I'm seeing. Right, there's some plant life on the top of some of these cliffs. So I'm gonna put this in and I'm just squinting at the scene to reduce it into simple shapes. Squinting uh, prevents me from focusing on detail. I'm getting some direct light onto the canvas, but I'm gonna have to work with it because there's, there's a breeze out here and I have to have the canvas oriented so the wind is blowing across it from the side so it doesn't blow over my easel. All right, there's some light colored rocks that almost look like a beach. And there's some orangish brown colors in the cliffs and then also in these rocks out here. And there's a little bit out here as well. I'm actually finding it easier to apply the paint on the canvas uh, than it is to apply it to a panel. This is really nice. All right, for the distant mountains, I'm using ultramarine blue and titanium white. Paying attention to the value of the distant mountains, I want to make sure that they recede into the distance. I'm really enjoying having the extra room uh, for these rocks and these mountains. Usually this part of the painting is really challenging on a smaller panel, even a 16 by 20. There's just so little room for these shapes. But I do like the idea of keeping these shapes small because it, uh, it does communicate how big the scene, or like the grandeur of the scene, as I mentioned. I'm seeing a pattern in the clouds up here that I like. It's like some dark clouds kind of hard to talk to the camera and do this, but I'll just leave it rolling and we'll see what happens. Definitely going through a lot of white paint. And I'm using Winton from uh, Windsor Newton. That's their student grade paint, but it actually, it's actually really nice paint. There's some cerulean in here, so I'm gonna leave a space for that. biggest challenges is just covering the whole canvas. I know a lot of people are like, why don't you use a big brush? Or you're probably thinking that. Why don't you use a big brush? Like I said, I like the scrubby effect I get with a smaller brush. And it really doesn't take that long, actually. I put in the cerulean patch here. This is too saturated. I'm gonna start with this and then I can always lighten it up. So there is the scrub in, the canvas is covered. So now I stand back and I look for uh, shapes that I wanna change or just compositional changes I wanna make. Uh, this dark line here, I wanna have some dark clouds coming down at an angle. So this is not just a straight line going across. Uh, I like the shapes in here and the sky is changing really quickly because of the stormy conditions. So I'm trying to pay attention and capture anything magical that happens or anything appealing. Okay, that's a, that's a little better there. This line needs to be sort of broken up. All right. Okay, that's, that's better, I think. All right, now I'm gonna start putting in some of the white water, and I actually wanna make these rocks a little bit smaller, and I wanna have an irregular pattern here that suggests waves in motion. 
I'm losing the light here. I was hoping that I would get more sunlight, but it seems like it's actually getting cloudier. That's all right. I still remember what the light on these rocks look like. Not only am I losing the sun, but the wind is starting to really pick up. And with a canvas this size, that can be a problem. So, I'm gonna try to speed up and finish this fairly quickly. And if this painting doesn't work out, I'll just paint over it. All right, now I'm going in with thick paint and reinforcing some of the things I like and then also altering some of the things that uh, I think need altering. I like the idea of having some saturated ultramarine in these distant hills. All right, I'm seeing some dark portions in the waves here. The color of the water is changing constantly. I'm seeing purple notes out there as well as dark uh, green or viridian colors. All right, now putting sky reflections on the surface of the water. Kind of a purplish gray. All right, so here's what I finished up with. This painting was completed in the field. Probably took two and a half hours to complete. Uh, one of the difficult things about showing a painting like this on you know, video is that you don't really get a feel for the size of it. So here's a similar uh, view that was painted. This is 11 by 14. One of the nice things about painting this size is that uh, you don't have to walk up close to the painting to see the brushwork. The brushwork is visible from, I'd say, about six to eight feet. It's, it has a really loose feel to it. I could have used a large brush for some of these shapes, but I feel like using the smaller uh, brush and building up these areas using multiple strokes uh, gives a nice energy to the painting. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. I've got a bunch of extra videos and a materials list, so check it out. And like I said, it really does help support the channel. It keeps me making these videos, and it's much appreciated. Check it out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.